Geeks, what is going on? Unite the Clans here, back in your life, with another episode of the Beginner's Guide. When we last stepped off, we were exploring another one of Coda's games from uh, 2010, I think, and we were locking ourselves away behind a stage, away from the limelight. And the narrator was talking about how he thought the game developer was doing the same thing. Now, if you guys haven't seen the previous episodes in this series, you gotta go check them out. I'll give you a card right here, because starting now, you may not be able to keep up. Uh, for those of you that have been keeping up, no further ado, let's do this thing. What is going on? Help, I'm blind, I can't see anything. What is going on? What is going on? Someone get help. Are we going to crash? There was a giant door and then my vision went black. They're all blind except for me. Please don't let this be forever. Yes, turbo lift. Oh. SS Whisper, the Whisper. You should probably open your eyes if you haven't uh, done anything. It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. And there is a solution, by the way. Yeah, I'll just wait right here. For the door to come to me. I hope not. Oh. We have to get the door open. Alright, that side killed me. I'm gonna try. You know what? Let's get to the captain's chair. Help, I'm blind. Let's try it. Please, tell me how to solve this. Shoot. Alright, I'm trying this one right away. Because... You have to open, you have to, how does it work? You have to go through a door, find the switch on the other, this one works, okay. Lamp post, we did it. The only way to stop it, speak something that's honest. I'm bursting with creative energy, I keep, keep making these. Yes, that's it, that's the truth. I don't feel it anymore. Like I said, I was getting concerned. I'm out of ideas. First off, He's never been this explicit in his work about exactly me. what he's thinking. So, where's that coming from? Keep going. But Keep talking. then, even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. I haven't been Not honest. like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. I have to Here work was harder. the point in my relationship with Coda where I really started to wonder if We're he going needed to my help okay. in some way. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. If you haven't picked up on it yet, guys, this is a game more about listening than talking, so you're not going to hear any silly voices or dumb jokes from me. We're just going to experience this. Hello, where am I? What is this? Start simple. Hello? Where did this island come from? How do I get out of here? Is what I say happens? Is that a person? How lovely. Where? What's wrong? You look lost. I'm completely out of ideas. When I try to create, I feel empty. I have nothing left to give to my work. There was a machine that kept me going and it stopped. I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me, to start it again. One, it kept me going and it stopped. 
Am I gonna find the engine? You were, wait, you're looking for a machine? I think I know where it is. It isn't far. What? What? It was a metaphorical machine. I can't even get up there. If the last game featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet, still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? Um, I can, I can take you to it, but there's a problem. It's guarded by a difficult puzzle. If you can help me solve the puzzle, we'll find the machine. Deal? Guys, I want to find the machine. Deal. Ah, oh, wow. Perfect. Come along, I'll show it to you. Because from my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. Hmm. Hey, I recognize this. I solved this puzzle before, and this is easy. I think the only one that I, I can definitely say is true is one. I don't know for sure this is the same puzzle yet. Hmm. First, you have to open the door. Okay, now what? Now you have to close the first door. Now just press the switch here. Huh, you that was so simple. Talk yourself out of loneliness. I can't believe I've it never solved work this that before. Way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. That's so then true. Then there's no movement. Then so there's true. no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Wow. These are just words on some walls with some really scary gasping. Trust me, you'll see. You have to say that your work is fun and easy. You have to say that game development is simple and joyous and that you love it 100% of the time. Two, sure, making games is easy. Ah, that feels wonderful. Why did the walls just crumble? Don't worry about it. Just keep talking. Keep saying that creation is easy. When I make games, I feel completely energized. Seeing this game at going. the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching it's such a simple solution. I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like. Video games are not worth this amount of suffering. Please, where is the machine? This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much Patience, joy out of me. seeing him create. Promise this for him work. to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this. It was the worst thing for me.
Any sacrifices made for my work are worth it 100% of the time. Yes, more. Time. Keep going. I don't know how else to There explain. is no shame, no fear, no guilt. I wanted it to stop more than Incredible. Anything. I had never felt so That's wrong. it. I just... That's I needed it. more I'm than free, I had ever I'm needed free. anything for this to stop. <laughs> oh, wow. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one... Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Guys, we're just getting settled in. These episodes are longer because this game deserves it. You need to experience it in big chunks. The machine. Guard. What's cracking, dude? Man, I'm glad to see you've arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you like. I intend to be brutal. Very good. Just be warned, someone called the press, so we might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing you should know about the machine. It calls itself... Coda. Coda. The press are here. Okay, no questions! Nope, no comment. Hey, keep your camera to yourself, you jerk-offs. There it is. There's the machine. This is the creativity machine. And of course, it's the machine. You stopped. Give me ideas. Your work was keeping us alive. It was only because of your creations that we could make it through every day. You have to admit to the people that you've let them suffer. I've been so alone. Apologize for leaving me. Ah! No? Nothing? Come on, just get going. All right then, I will apologize to the people on your behalf. I've defeated it. My followers, my friends. I have a troubling revelation. The machine will not apologize to us. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. Let us show it that we are not failures. Follow me. We will destroy everything the machine has created. Oh my gosh, this guy's thinking about deleting everything he's ever made. He's thinking about... Just deleting everything. We're back on stage. Hit the damn lights. What? Oh, guys, I got shivers right now. What? Destroy it. Blast it apart. Erase it. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people. Coda, to get some actual I'll make sure your games, work dies here. It might get him out of isolation. Coda. Whoa. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback. So, what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? Oh, I 
can destroy the floor. Floor in this one. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Wow. Put down your weapon. Hmm. Weapon. Can you see well, why I felt like down. this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves yes, blast it. in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something. I really felt like I'd done something good, like like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. Huh. And they told me how much they enjoyed his games. It was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy, so beautifully, beautifully happy. Um, so anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. Hmm. This one is called The Tower. And to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. Geeks, that is going to have to do it for our third episode of the incredible game, The Beginner's Guide. Um, it's been intense, powerful, and moving so far, and there is more ahead of us. Expect the next episode in a couple of days. Thank you so much for watching this one, guys. I will link to the entire series at the end of the video, as well as to my playthrough of David Reedon's best known game, The Stanley Parable. That's going to do it for this one. I'm Unite the Clans, and I will see you all in the next episode.